to go. Um, so everybody here likes open mics, right? Yes, obviously. Everybody here loves podcasts. So if you put those together, you have an amazing podcast with a great comedian. Wayne Russell coming up. He got, you got to check it out. The podcast is called Open Mic Pain. That's about a good love for Wayne for Anthony Eugenio. Everybody. Wayne Russell, everybody! Welcome to the Open Mic Pain with Anthony and Wayne Podcast. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Open Mic Pain with Anthony and Wayne. Here we are with another Open Mic of the Week. And I'm here with my co-host, Anthony Eugenio. Anthony, what is going on? Well, Wayne, I'll tell you what is fucking going on. We are going to coffee and motherfucking cotton once a month mike in lowell massachusetts how you feel about that shit i feel really good especially since tonight is going to be a special guest host uh jacques lambert and uh i've been talking to jacques a lot the last few weeks um i really like him a lot he's a good dude and i'm really excited to go uh to a mic that he's hosting so uh how how do you feel about tonight yeah i'm excited because jacques is going to be there too I'm also excited because his name is cool. Because you can say Jacques Lambert. Maybe you say Jack Lambert. He's got two different ways to say it. Like, my name, if you say it wrong, you say it wrong. It just doesn't come, and everybody fucking does. But it just doesn't come out right. But Jacques, he's got a lot of flavor in there. I like it. Mm-hmm. Besides that, yeah, he's also nice. good. I, I, I love Jacques. The, the first time I ever saw Jacques perform was actually at Coffee and Cotton. And I was in awe. I I love his his style of comedy. Um, in awe, you he, say. he just he makes in awe. Yeah, he makes me giggle. I, I just everything he says is just I don't know. It just makes me laugh. I, I love it. So I'm really excited to uh, one be going to a, an open mic that he's uh, hosting, and and two the fact that I'm actually talking to him on a personal level is, is pretty cool to me because uh, when I first saw him, I was like, yep. That's uh, that's what an open mic comic is. So, pretty cool. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um, this one is a synonymously hard list to get on. So, we got on the first time we went, and then second time we went to the safe. We had, well, I didn't. I wasn't there. You went, and you had some issues. Tell us about the issues. You, you. So you said the safe, but you meant uh, coffee and cotton. I did. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, so when you were in England, I went to uh, Coffee and Cotton. I actually uh, got there. I think the list at the t- I think the list at that time was at seven. I could be wrong. Maybe it was six thirty. But I got there a little bit after the list started, uh, or went out rather, and it was completely full. Um, that was two months ago. Completely full. I wasn't able to get on, uh, but I stayed and I watched. I watched the whole thing. It, it, it was great. Uh, I didn't go the week, the month after. They set up a new rule there, or not a rule, but they tried a new thing where they had people um, emailing or, or direct messaging Sean, uh, the guy who I, I think he runs it, uh, to to get on the list. And this time, I messaged sorry messaged Sean, and he said that they're going back to in person. So. Hopefully, we'll be able to get down there and and get on the list in time. Uh, So, (laughs) I completely agree. I am excited for getting back up there and actually making it happen at Coffee and Cotton. I like the once a month mics because it feels like people get a little bit more excited to check them out. Um, You know, the month in between makes you feel like it's a little bit more exclusive. I know there's one in Portsmouth called Book and Bar. So, that one will be cool to check out eventually. Also hmm. a, what they list as a PG-13 mic, which we should talk about that. What's a PG-13 mic? Yeah, I honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> I, I'm i assuming like you, I don't know, like keep the swears to a minimum. I honestly, I have no idea. If somebody says that to me, I have no idea. I know Coffee and Cotton is one of them. Um, and admittedly, I, I don't pay much attention. I... I try to to keep the swears and stuff to a minimum, but I I don't I honestly don't know what PG thirteen is. It's been a long time since since I've had to worry about that. Can you see a titty in a PG thirteen movie? Was Titanic PG thirteen? 
because you saw you saw some Winslet titties there. You saw some Winslet bush. Uh, that couldn't have been PG-13. <laughs> that had to be R. God. God damn. <laughs> January embers made my fire burn. But, well, bush is just like natural pixelation, you know? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's like the beautifulest cover on the reddest of books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry that's like oh, i used shit. to fucking make a glass handprint on the window of my car by myself to that movie <laughs> uh, I don't oh, what about. so what are you doing tonight so, <laughs> I'm fucking the show well b- before we go that far um one cool thing about this mic was uh, last month, which I didn't go, and uh, you didn't go either, uh, there was a Lowell Sun article written about this. Uh, not necessarily about this mic, but about the Lowell, Massachusetts comedy boom. Oh, yeah. I read that. Um, that and cool. It was actually, yeah, it was actually centered uh, somewhat around Jacques, um, and he brought in a bunch of other comics. Um, uh, Jen, is it Jen Howell? I think it was the name. I, I've seen her a couple times. I, I, I'm, I apologize if that's the wrong name. I think it's Jen Howell. Um, Casey Woods was on there. Fredo Cruz was on there. And, and, and there might have been another one. And I, once again, I apologize if I'm missing somebody. But it was a really cool article about the, the comedy boom in Lowell, Massachusetts. And um, I was actually there the night that the reporter was there. And that was the night that I couldn't get up. Um, but it, that was a really cool article. Go check it out. Um, I think it came out sometime in June. But yeah, so um, I guess for me for tonight, uh, I did some work on my ghost bit uh, about the gay ghost. Um, I added to it. I changed some things, and I'm gonna give it a shot tonight and see how it goes. Um, I, I think I kind of fleshed it out a little bit more. I don't know. I sent you some things. I don't. I don't know what you your thoughts on it were. Um, other than what you said, which might have been complete lies to me, I don't know. You might have just being nice. Uh, <laughs> no, I straight but tell you. That's my plan. I straight tell you. I yeah, think that's no, a you, great you, bit. You, 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 you do. But uh, yeah, that's that's my that's my plan tonight is to try that out again. And um, historically, the second time I went on stage was at Coffee and Cotton, and it didn't go as well as I wanted. I had a couple misogynistic jokes that didn't go over so well, so I don't know how a joke about a gay ghost is going to go, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'll give it a shot and see. I don't know. That's the spirit. How about yourself? <laughs> uh, so this week I have to try um, try one of my newer jokes that I have called Sperm Whale again, so i got to get that in there. Um, haven't tried, uh, only done that twice. And then I got my uh, staple bits that I'm trying to finish. I, I know that sounds weird for a comic to say finish a bit because a bit's never really quite finished. You're always kind of tinkering it. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to take them to the, their final logical leap of, all right, prison joke that I have. This is the structure. Here's a one and a half minute. Here's a two minute version of it. And uh, really try to tighten up the punchline. So tonight I think is... I don't want to call it the final version, but I'm getting really close. And uh, my Sober California joke, I really want to tell that to all crowds, diverse. I've said that multiple times on here. And I keep trying to find ways not to absolutely really uh, make the entire crowd feel bad. So uh, I'm working on that too. I got a new crab part to it that I think is going to help, you know, soften the blow of the misogyny, if you will. So yeah, that's what I'm trying that's awesome. Um, tonight, we plan on having a, uh, a guest with us, uh, Justin George. I've mentioned Justin before on the podcast. We haven't had him on before, but we've gone to a few mics with him. Um, I got to say, I think Justin is one of the funniest people that I see. He, he, he is, he's told me he hasn't really been going up that often, or it's not that often, that, uh, that long, rather. And I am completely in awe at how comfortable he is on the stage and how much he makes me laugh. Wayne has so um, much first... awe that he gives. I do. Awe's I do. I, I, it's like this. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first 
the first time that I, uh, I, I talked with Justin, uh, we met up at the safe and we stuck around and watched a set. And I was just like, God damn this. I don't know. There's something about him. I, I, I like his stuff. I like his style. Um, yes. Great. And so I'm excited. To see I love Justin's uh, comedy too. I think that on the fly, he's a great improver and all that, which is great. Can't wait to see his set. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So, Hopefully in the after show he'll be able to stick around and, and talk with us about what he was planning to do and what he actually did and how it went and all that stuff. So, yeah, goddamn right. Um, do you have anything else to talk about uh, tonight? You have anything or anything that? Uh, no, just want to thank again, Strikes in. Jacques Lambert for hosting tonight. And also Sean, who runs it. Thank you, Sean. Um, We want to have both those guys on the podcast at some time. Sean, because you run shows out of UMass Lowell and over there, and it's really cool to see a young guy like that try to make comedy, uh, you know, explode a little bit more. And Jacques for being a cool dude, supportive, and hooking everybody up. So thank you, sons of bitches. Yeah, I'll I'll say Jacques is one of the biggest supporters of our podcast. Um, He... I'm pretty sure he's listened to every single one because every time we post one, he sends me a message and says how much he loves it. And uh, Jacques, I know you're listening to this, so thank you so much. I appreciate that. And if you don't know, Jacques runs a uh, a podcast himself uh, called Carnival Personnel, which is awesome. Um, I I found out about that a few weeks ago, and I've listened to every single one since. Uh, he has a lot of great comics on there. Uh, some of which we hope, or all of which we hope to have on at some point. Um, you know, Nick Powell, Xtina, he had Lloyd Legacy Sharp on there. Uh, all fantastic uh, episodes. So go check that out if you haven't. If you don't know that he has that, go listen. It's great. Uh, I, I really enjoy them myself. Um, so we, we, got a, uh, we got an email, uh, actually our first email since we started the show. Uh, from a uh, from Bob Moran, uh, a gentleman who is uh, in one of the Facebook groups. Uh, I think it was Boston Comedians. Um, so he shared his story with us uh, about why he started uh, stand up. He listened to our podcast. He sent me a, a message uh, on Instagram, and I said, "Hey, you know, why don't you why don't you send me an email about why you started and you know your your whole story." So I'd like to share that with you guys because this is what this is all about. Anthony and I started a few months ago and we wanted to start a show where we could talk about our experiences as well as listen to you guys and your experiences and how you write, where you go, how you got into stand-up and all that stuff. Uh, And this is our first one. So this is really exciting for me. I don't know if you can tell I'm rambling, but I'm really excited about this. So I'd like to share this email with you um, if you guys are cool with it, which you know what? You're fucking listening, so you're going to be cool with it. Don't you dare hit pause. Don't you hit, dare end it. You're just begging people to skip past this, Wayne. Read the fucking letter. God damn it. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, here it is. This is from Bob Moran. Uh, he said, how I got started, I'm in a group that is working through the book, The Artist Way. The author suggests that many blocked creative types hang around their aspirations in the shadows. Uh With all the time watching comedy on YouTube, I realized I'm a shadow comic. I mentioned that a friend, I'm sorry, I mentioned that and a friend told me about a Facebook group called Boston Comedians Part 2 a few weeks ago. Uh, They have a spreadsheet with tons of open mics, which we talked about in our our initial episode about how to find an open mic and start. Great spready. It really is. Uh, I saw one near me and I was off to the races. Because my day job is being a life coach, I'm developing a comedic persona and get introduced as Robert B. Moran, life coach. In addition to club work, I want to get corporate gig- gigs. That led me to the, to the decision to work clean. Uh, which, hats off to you, Bob, because I cannot work clean. I don't think I can go in a sentence in my life without saying the word fuck. <laughs> so if you can do an entire set without saying anything dirty, good for you. Um, but we really appreciate you writing in. Um, we had a, I had a small conversation with him. Great conversation. I love it. Yeah, so if and you've I'm got really a corporate excited. Hopefully gig, I'll get to see him. You want stuff that uh, me and Wayne couldn't do for you because we would talk about <laughs> anal rape and stuff like that, and you can't have that in a corporate setting? 
<laughs> Bob won't do that to you. Bob is going to give you a nice, clean show that you're going to get lots of funny without afterwards having to explain to the younger people on there why that brown man made everybody feel bad. So bring them on in, everybody. <laughs> and periodically, if you send us mail, hate mail or not, we'll read it on there if it's nice. If it's hate mail, real hate mail, Wayne will just come on it like a tribute. Oh, God, no. I'm going to even hate mail. I'll... I mean, our email is hate mail at openmikepain.com. Yeah, we are asking If you for send it. me hate mail, I'm reading it on the air. Um, oh, Jesus. And I'm not going to – yeah. I'm not going to say I'm going to you know Facebook stalk you and – find something to shit on you about but i might facebook stalk you and find something to shit on you about but <laughs> so you get for having a facebook if you did <laughs> that's true that's true but uh yeah thank thank you very much bob for uh for being a supporter listening and writing in we appreciate it thanks bob we'll see you soon somewhere out there in the wild on the path for quest for paths for lands. fuck my pronouns are he and him, my adjectives are fat, and I'm also bald. Say it loud to the crowd. Went forward. Boom. There's other people who start to fucking fuck me. So this is my first time doing a mic here. You show your sins? That's my point. I'm <laughs> <laughs> destructively high right now. I didn't think a person could have that many good ideas. We're here outside of Coffee and Cotton Bowl, Massachusetts. Really excited, it's a once a month mic, and uh, we came out here, and tonight, we, uh, I'm not even going to introduce Wayne, fuck him. We have a special guest, way cooler than Wayne. Uh, his name, Justin George, everybody. How you doing, brother? <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for uh, asking me to get on here. I've been secretly upset with you guys. If you haven't asked me to get on until this episode, yeah, great. Yeah, Wayne was worried about having two people with bigger penises around him. Uh, he did not want that <laughs> on the radio. Uh, you're all set. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so coffee and uh, motherfucking cotton. Uh, you're not talking. Uh, we, <laughs> coffee and cotton, we were excited to come here. It's a really tough mic to get on because it's quite popular. So we're going to go down the list and talk about what we wanted to do and how it went for us. When you start stuff. Yeah, it was great. First off, I'd like to say a big shout out to Jacques. Um, he was the guest host this week. I think he did a really great job. Um, I'd like to see more of him hosting around. Um, for me, um, yeah, I tried the ghost bit again. Um, so they, like Anthony said, it was so popular. They cut it down from five minutes to four minutes and I was practicing. Um, I rewrote the joke a little bit and I added something to the end that I was really excited to try, but I had to cut it to get down to that four minute point. Uh, but overall, I think it went pretty well. There was a few parts that didn't hit this time, but hit last time that I might change next week. I don't know, but overall I was pretty happy. Nice, nice. How about you, Justin? You, uh, so you, you weren't on the beginning show. Um, what were you planning on doing, and how did that change when you found out it went to four minutes? Um, once we found out it was four minutes, I just said, fuck it. And I threw my entire set out, and I said, I'm going to try this. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of like debating it within my own head of, uh, like, I know I could hit this, hit this, and but I wanted to like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like challenge myself to like do something different. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just threw it to the wind and said, I'm gonna try this. And I only had ideas. I, like so, everything I did tonight isn't even written. It's just like bullet points, not even close to that. Like yeah. the, the roughest of drafts. But if it didn't hit, didn't hit. Um, I wasn't upset about it. It was just more of uh, like a confidence booster for me. I gotta say, I think most of what you did hit. Um, you had some stuff that I, I was surprised when you told me it was all off the top of your head. You, you did fantastic. And he was playing through an injury because I got it. I got it. <laughs> Anthony strikes I don't again. Know what, I don't even know what floor we're on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm very but good I, at drugs. Everybody. Um, I had a blast. I, I had a blast. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, like, in my head, in my head, I bombed because I missed some things I wanted to do, even though I didn't have a script. 
Like there were other things of that set that I wanted to do, yeah. but it, I missed it. Some of it wasn't like imperative to doing the the joke, mm -hmm. but um, still confident. Like I'm, I want to do it again. Like now. Mm, yeah, I I have a, a checkered past with this mic. Uh, this is the second mic that I did, and the jokes I had were not really the cup of tea of the people that were there. I will say the the crowd tonight was different than the crowd from when I was there because they were like um, a family was there like it was like a seventeen year old girl doing her first set and it was oh. like, all right cool good for her yeah but she also had like her eleven year old brother oh yeah and yeah. the family and the aunts so it was like, like uh, uh. so I will say that's one thing about this mic that it's it's kind of not weird to me but. They say kind of keep it PG thirteen. Right. That's hard for me because I say fuck every other word. It's yeah, like I asked what me. that meant, by the way. I, I talked to Jacques about it, which we should say, by the way. Jacques Lambert hosted the show tonight, and yes. he's the coolest motherfucker in this goddamn game. He really supports our uh, podcast, or mm -hmm. like he wants us to do more mics. He reaches out the way on Facebook, and I don't have that shit because it's for elderly and pedophiles. Those two types of people. I don't know who you guys are. One of those two. Uh, <laughs> I was going to add to that, but <laughs> yeah, I'm nervous. So, I, I will say, uh, I think it was Ren, the last time we were at the safe, or no, I'm sorry, it was uh, it was Nick Powell called Jacques the father of low, the low comedy scene, yeah, and I can see that 100%. He's that, just like so supportive that. and like, you know, he wants come here children, he does, I gotcha. He wants you to come back, yeah. he wants you to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks Jacques, and uh, Star Wars is fucking awesome, I don't care about this guy's <laughs> All right, my set now, right? Can I do yeah, mine? Yeah, I was, I was going to lead up to that, okay? but if you want to be self-indulgent, go for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you never fucking do. You never... Boring! <laughs> uh, I did, uh, so four minutes kicked off the bit I actually wanted to do uh, that I haven't done yet, and that was a minute, so I had to do my two staples of prison and California sober. A couple different parts in there I tried for the first time tonight. Got my, got my deadliest catch in. I really wanted to say that. So the problem with that bit, uh, technically, is I go into uh, talking about how I um, am against trans people, kind of. Like, I'm not, <laughs> but in the bit, I kind of am. And that really fucking turns people off. It shuts the switch off in the room. So I needed to figure out how to get out of the hole that I did when I do that. And I think it did pretty good, right? The, the yeah, it definitely did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that definitely flowed. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, uh, because the first couple times I did it, I got some anger. Uh, Blue-haired faces looking back at me. <laughs> you know the ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know who I'm talking about. We already discussed it. Yeah. Um, before we start on you, you, you were saying that you actually talked to Jacques uh, about PG-13 and we moved oh, off the tangent. So yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what was your conversation like with so that? So it's basically that the, all, all they tell him for parameters are is don't be too graphic and try not to say fun. That's the oh, two Jesus things. Jesus Christ. I know, I know. <laughs> I, uh, Jesus Christ is okay, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have asked before you went up what to do, but I uh, I didn't say fuck the whole time. I was the only one that listened to the goddamn rules. Everybody right. else, like... Uh, pussy okay? Yeah. Because <laughs> I dropped that, too. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. That one's a little graphic. That's graphic for me. Like, I will say cunt, but I cannot hear you say pussy. Because you say, you're like... Mm, What's a pussy? Mm, pussy. <laughs> it's a wing. It's a word for it. <laughs> Both got each other at the same time. I, I, uh, think, I, I think he kept doing that to like save himself yeah because i think the, the, the crowd there was fine I, yeah. I don't think there was something like someone was complaining like everybody there was either a comic or a friend of a comic or someone that came to watch i think he was just more like covering himself which like yeah, yeah totally yeah, get it. It. they asked him to do it not exactly yeah, exactly so yeah, you I, gotta you gotta play by the rules yeah, uh, yeah. I, I used to dj um like weddings and jack and jills and stuff i did that for like 12 years and I had what I would normally do, you read the crowd or whatever, but then occasionally you would have uh, the person paying you say, hey, I need you to do this instead, and it takes everything right, right, against right, yeah, your yeah. will uh, to, to just yeah, follow yeah. the rules. So yeah, I, I kind of get that. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I think he did great. I mean, yeah, considering I, it, it, at first when he was like, oh, we're going down the floor. Well, at first when he said, we're going down the floor, I was like, well, I'm 16. So what do you mean? Going on the floor? We're going four comics. Oh, we're doing four mics. Oh, that was when the week first kicked in. Yeah. 
Anthony poisoned me. The but elf. Had four minutes. So for us, like we talked about last last week, we were going to do the Middle East, um, which was five minutes, and we ended up not being able to get on the list. So we ended up at um, Tavern at the End of the World, and we did four minutes. And we know that's Anthony's arch nemesis. And it was nice to see you for a second week in a row be able to pivot I know, and, I know. and not shut down. Yeah, so the one time I ate so much shit uh, was at the save. Uh, I read online, it said six minutes, so I practiced a six minute set. And when I got there, Ren was like, oh, it's five minutes. And I was like, oh, because I'm really high every time. So I was already locked in. And now I know that when that happens, I always have a one minute bit in your set that, so I can kick it out right, right, and right. just be that way. What I did instead was I took out a chunk of one bit, which is so stupid. Because it was like deleting my brain memory when I got to that part I was supposed to take out. <coughs> Completely forgot my set. And um, yeah, that was a fucking nightmare. But didn't happen tonight. Did I right? Did I just went from once we knew that it was going to be four minutes, I was just like, ah, fuck it, threw it out. But kudos, I, you, you missed it because you were fucking late. Um, <laughs> Every fucking time. Why um, didn't we make it to the Middle East, please? I gave, uh, <laughs> I gave Anthony some. Uh, because I've, I've watched you guys' podcast, and there were two, the, so out of, like, the economy of words is, is sticking. But the other part I, he said to you about the dick joke was you got to make the dick joke like 90 seconds long and four minutes long and be able to like split. And yep. that, that I, I never thought of that. It's either like it's working or it doesn't. Yeah. So with economy of words, it could be like, no, oh. Like abort, like you got to be able to get out or get in. I thought like that was a huge put up. That was awesome. Like I have that in my notes of uh, that. It said yeah. <laughs> make sure you don't. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah two and different versions. The f- I got it from was Bert Kreischer. So uh, he has the machine story. If you, you know Bert yeah, Kreischer. Yeah, yeah. So this famous story. He tells it in uh, I think seven minutes, fifteen minutes, or twenty-five minutes. I think he has like that many right, versions right. of the same story. And I thought, man, that's like thing as comics and f words. We are our whole <laughs> our whole idea is if we're doing anything mechanical, the jokes are our tools. So to have more versatility in the tool is probably helpful, you know, when you're doing fifteen-minute sets because they're different feels. Five-minute sets, in my opinion, should be bang, bang, bang. Get your rhythm out, go quick. You want to get their energy up and sustain it. But if you're doing 15 minutes up, you might take that same bit and air it out a little bit. Do some crowd work during your, uh, you know, maybe if I do my California sober, but I can talk to them about people like weed and the crowd and all that shit. Or <clears throat> now I don't bulldoze right through it. So, you know. It's funny you say bang, bang, bang. That, so I, I texted you a joke I was going to do today, just a stupid throwaway joke I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Because I had like an extra like ten seconds in the five minutes, and I, I completely forgot to do it. I was just going to do it. It, it was. I'll, I'll, I'll waste it here. Because I bought my dog a tick collar a couple weeks ago. It doesn't work for shit. She still has Tourette's. <laughs> I think it's, it's fucking stupid. But yeah, I mean, like, those, those stupid, <laughs> those stupid small, like almost like street jokes things. Yeah. Like at times, because you're thinking so much of like in depth and yeah. length and all. <laughs> But a stupid joke like that is yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah. I, I wanted to try it so bad, but I just, the whole four minutes thing just threw me off. The, for the ironic part about all this is they were dying for you to do a joke like that. Instead, you were like, I'm going to get fucked in my ass. And they were like, they get their day, come on. You had that in the yeah. chamber. Yeah. 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 I also I'm, wanted to, like, before we get too far into it, shout out to not doing PG-13 with Dana Fuller. I think we should give credit where credit's due. Because they were like, please, do not do your normal set. And he was like, I'm doing this right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's there's a definition of not give a fuck. PG-35. Good job, Dan. There's there's a definition of not give a fuck. That was was the best I've seen him. He didn't look rehearsed. He flowed. Yeah, yeah. That was decent. I think every time we should just tell him not to do his normal set. And he's like, I'm going to do it. And he's going to put their nails Just tell him, like, you're presenting to a third rate class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See what happens. I know. I, yes, his dick might come up. One of our favorite things about Dana, <laughs> when we say it all the time, is when he's trying new stuff and it doesn't go. He just goes, "Whatever." Yeah, that is yeah, one of my yeah, favorite yes, fucking yeah, things yeah. ever. It catches I love it. every time. I like it. I love yeah. it. It makes me laugh every time. I have some of those things like at the ready. Like if a, if a joke bombs, regardless of what it is, I fucking Democrats. <laughs> 
they just attribute to that. Uh, one thing I did see, and you mentioned Ren Marquez, uh, the host of the Safe. Yeah, uh, shout out to Ren. He's great. I saw on Facebook today. Uh, you had sent me the the, was it the Buren or Buren. The Buren. The Buren. It's a amateur comedy contest. He actually won it yesterday. Oh, oh, oh shit! Yeah, so he went. He won it. So congratulations to Ren. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. He was trying to. Uh, I think he was trying to get in there today, and then he saw the list, and saw the time change. Yeah, I saw him when I was pulling in. Out. Yeah. Uh, that sucks, but uh, he's the man. Yeah. Congrats to him. Yeah, well, we're gonna try to get on that fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how, but we're coming for you. <laughs> All right, so final thoughts, boys, on the night. Uh, let's start with Justin. Uh, you know, give us a little wrap up. I hate to say it, like it was like a throwaway, but it was. I threw the set that I was gonna do aside, and I just went off the cuff. Um, I missed some stuff. I had some of uh, Anthony's salad and um, <laughs> the devil's. Uh, yeah, I'm not chalking it up to that, but the, like. Like, I didn't care. I wasn't scared. Um, I didn't feel any, like, nervousness. That's the superpower. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, feel nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel, I mean, I, hey, I could jump right off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I, on, honestly, it was more of, um, I think, if anything, it was like an exercise type thing. Like, mm-hmm. it was just, like, I think it was worth it to a degree to go, like, all right, well, four minutes. I don't have four minutes. I have five minutes, but I have ideas. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck it. Let's go for it. And, yeah, I think I think I want to write something to build off of. Yeah. Was this your first time here? First time performing, right? For first time, yeah. I, so yeah. I came here to check it out, and then I think uh, the whole like you know, PG thirteen whatever kind of scared me. But I don't think they they just keep saying PG thirteen. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, you, you can't really force somebody to do that. Of course, now that shuts off. Hopefully, that wasn't too much. Of a right, right. But uh, you can't really force somebody. And, and obviously, <laughs> they want comics to try to adhere to that. Um, yeah, that's but like at the same time, if you're going to like a, a soda comic, from a grocery store, and you're like, well, you can't really make it pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'll say PG-13 is different to everybody. You know, like when I was a kid, I had friends when when I was 13, they couldn't play Grand Theft Auto. Well, for and, me, and I was stealing like dance porn tapes. So. <laughs> I think the crowd changes there, and that they have to keep saying it because that place does have, like there's families that live in that building. Yeah, it's, you know it's a mill, but so like if they walk by, mm-hmm. whatever the case is, somebody complained a long time ago, and it, it, yeah. you have to keep saying it. So it, no fault of yeah. it, it's not a bar, um, it's a coffee shop. Bar. It, yeah, in Canada, but it, it's a, it's a coffee shop, so it's it's not like it's not like you could. Uh, even it's in a PG-13 movie, though, you get one fuck. You know that? The, is it one fuck? Yeah, if you're going to make a movie and you... Uh, you can negotiate things. Yeah, if you got money. But if you don't have money and you're just like, I'm making an indie movie, you get to say fuck one time in PG-13. And they told us not to say fuck at all, so... I said it like seven times. Yeah, Wayne fucked up with that. Wayne didn't fuck about that. Thank God I couldn't go the full uh, five minutes because the last minute was all about <laughs> me being fucked. So <laughs> there would have been a lot of fucks thrown around. Can yeah. you do dick talk there? Uh, I will someday. <laughs> yeah, someday. I don't know because they said graphic. And I don't think it's too graphic. The Steve Buscemi part is pretty graphic, but that's like. That I Buscemi, mean, Danny did it so good. Danny, <laughs> Danny told me that I have the record for saying "dick" the most times in five minutes. So I don't. I, how many dicks do you get? In, in a I have the Guinness World Record of saying. Dicks when in you five do, <laughs> when, if you ever do dick talk there, I'm gonna like rent a guy that does balloon animals and invite all the children <laughs> from the building. <laughs> Hey, that's Wayne. Mm-hmm. Here's the yeah. thing, I wouldn't give a fuck. No. No, you gotta throw your comedy yeah. out there no matter if they yeah. like it or not. <laughs> you can roll off somebody. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Uh, you got wrap-up thoughts, or did you just wrap your thoughts up? Yeah, that was my wrap-up thoughts. Uh, I mean, my first time here, this is my second time performing here. I was here one time, I couldn't get on the list, and I stayed for the whole thing, and it was awesome. The first time I was here, it was a much different crowd. They, uh, they weren't really taking to some of the more um, non-PG-13 things that I was saying. Um, but tonight, they laughed at a lot of stuff that I was like, oh, nice. Yeah. That was nice. How about you? We did good. Now, join us next week on another step towards our quest for land. I talked enough. <laughs>